Today we'll be baking a two pound fish fillet with roasted potatoes. This super easy recipe is great for gatherings or for bulk meal prepping. All right, let's get started. First, we'll set our oven to 425 so that it's ready in time for our potatoes. I'm starting the clock at just three minutes since I'll be getting the rest of the ingredients and equipment as the dish progresses. First, I'm going to cut some red skin potatoes into one inch cubes. You can use Yukon gold or whatever you have available. Although, washed skin potatoes like the Yukon and the red are the preferred for roasting. Oh, and don't forget to wash them before cutting since we'll be leaving the skins on. Now, I like to transfer the potatoes to a bowl for seasoning instead of directly onto the pan, but only because the bowl makes it easier for mixing and seasoning. Okay, first we coat them with some vegetable oil, then some fresh black cracked pepper, kosher salt, and finally a generous amount of dried oregano. Make sure you add a good amount of seasoning as the potatoes are super bland. Mix it well and we're now ready to transfer them to our sheet pan. Now spreading the potatoes and using a low rim pan allows them to better brown and crisp up. Alright, we throw them in the oven and roast them for the first 20 minutes. Now we take this time to get our salmon ready while our potatoes cook. First, I rub my fingertips while applying a little bit of pressure down the center of the fillet to see if I feel any bones. Now, most markers do a decent job of removing the bones, but sometimes a couple of stragglers do come along, so always check. There's nothing worse than having dinner guests picking fish bones out of their mouths, or worse yet, have someone choke on one. Now we check the skin for scales. Most often they're removed, but unfortunately for me, this one still has them. To check, simply run the back of your knife from the tail end to the head, and if the scales have been removed, the knife should slide smoothly. Here I took a parent knife and scraped off the scales in a couple of minutes. Since this process can get a bit messy, you can always ask your fishmonger or salesperson to do it for you. And they often do it free of charge, since they have the right tools they can do it right away. Now I wiped everything down and rinsed the fish on the cold water. The stupid scales are sticky. Pat both sides dry and is ready for seasoning. I place it in the dish pan since it's going to marinate for 15 to 20 minutes before sticking it in the oven. We add kosher salt, some fresh cracked black pepper, a generous amount of dried oregano, a good amount of olive oil, and squeeze a whole lemon. Now gently rub it all over and set it aside to marinate. All right, let's go back to our potatoes after 20 minutes of roasting and mix them around a bit so that they can brown and crisp on all sides. We'll just do a quick mix to try to get most of them. We don't have to turn every potato. Throw them back in the oven for another 25 minutes, but 15 minutes before it ends, we add our fish. Now carefully lay the fish over the potatoes along with all the juice and oils. After 15 minutes or so, depending on the size of the fillet, we take it out and check for doneness. The fish should flake off but still look juicy. Now salmon is very forgiving. It'll still taste great if you overcook it a bit, so don't worry too much. I personally like it a little rare, but you can cook it a bit longer if you like. Okay, let's plate this thing. Cut about a 4 ounce piece of fillet and add some potatoes. Here I made a quick mixed green salad with blueberries, apples for crunchiness, tomatoes, red onions, and dressed it with a quick balsamic vinegar and olive oil dressing with salt, pepper, Italian spices, and a sprinkle of brown sugar. Now don't tell anyone about the sugar, that's a secret. That's it, simple hassle-free delicious meal for $4.35 per plate. This recipe can serve 6 to 8 folks and it only took about 50 minutes. But wait, there's more. Now you can take the same raw salmon and cut it into 4 ounce portions and pan sear them. This time I'm going to show you how to pan sear a salmon and pair it with a delicious, naturally sweet cauliflower puree. We'll start with the puree because we're going to sear our salmon while our cauliflower cooks. First we dice a white onion. Now here you can use any onion, but using the white onion will keep our cauliflower brightly white. We take our cauliflower after rinsing it with cold water and remove the leaves and green stems. Put it on its side, get the knife close and just cut straight down. Take the knife and carefully cut around the root. Did a poor job here, would have been easier with a utility knife or a paring knife, but you get the gist. Crack it open and cut off any excess green stems. Make some room and you're ready to start slicing it. We want to make thin slices so that it cooks faster. Put them to the side, every single speck because I'm a crazy person and we're ready to start cooking. Get a pot warm. Now I'm still trying to get used to this induction burner. This thing heats pots and pans very quickly. It's freaking crazy how quick it is. Anyway, throw in three tablespoons of butter and let them melt, but not brown, so watch your heat. Throw in our onions and cut them in butter. Then throw in our cauliflower, mix it all around, and let it cook for about three to four minutes on medium low heat. After four minutes or so, we add enough milk to cover cauliflower. You can add any type of milk, almond, coconut, you get it. The milk also helps the cauliflower stay white, but you can swap out the milk for broth like vegetable or chicken, but the puree won't be as white. Okay, add about half a teaspoon of kosher salt. Best to under season now and add more salt later if necessary. Add white pepper. I use white pepper to also keep the cauliflower white, but you can use regular. Man, this cauliflower is starting to sound racist. Add garlic powder, mix, cover, and let it simmer for 10 minutes. Now, while our racist cauliflower cooks, we prepare our salmon. Season with salt and fresh cracked black pepper on both sides and coat with some olive oil. Get a pan at medium heat, but not hot. People always say get a pan smoking hot, but not for fish. You'll burn the skin and the fish will still be raw. Okay, carefully lay the fish skin side down away from you. Now, the fish is going to buckle as soon as it hits the pan and you're going to want to immediately press down, but don't. 
or else the skin could come right off. Be patient and just give it a little gentle press either with your fingertips or a spatula. Cook it skin side down until the fish cooks about halfway on the thickest part. You can tell by looking at the side as it changes colors from pink to white. There should be enough time for the skin to easily detach from the pan, but you can also use a non-stick to be safer. Anyway, we flip it, add a bit of butter, tilt the pan, and bathe it for a bit to infuse some more flavor. You can at this point also add some aromatics like a few sprigs of thyme. After about a minute, we take it off the heat and let it rest while we finish our cauliflower. Take the hot cooked cauliflower and strain it into a blender. This one's ginormous. I need to order a smaller jar. Anyway, it's very important to do this while the cauliflower is still hot or you'll end up with some grainy puree and nobody wants that. Here I'm using a towel to cover the top because we need to allow the steam to escape while we blend. Now I'm going to risk my life and get an internal view of what's going on. I'm kidding, don't do this. My blender has a knob that allows me to gradually lower and increase the speed, so don't do this. This is not part of the process. Now I added some of the hot milk to help it blend better because my jar is too big for the amount that I'm making. You can also add hot milk a little bit at a time if your cauliflower isn't blending. You know, if it just sticks to the sides of the walls. But do be careful not to add too much milk or it will be too runny. Okay, now I cranked it up and really blended it. Here I'm slowing it down to show you how it turned out. It should be super smooth. At this point you can taste and adjust for seasoning. Just add seasoning and blend it a bit so that it mixes well. Alright, we're ready to play this one. Add about 3 tablespoons of cauliflower puree, shake the plate evenly to smooth it out and lay our perfectly seared skinned fish skin side up right on top. Again, here I paired it with a salad and voila! A delicious gourmet meal for only $4.60 per plate. Well, I hope you give this recipe a try and as always, the ingredients are in the description below.